the same as you over here. Everybody have the right to say something when they know that there is something wrong. Everyone have the right to call the Congress, to call the White House, to call the Senate, to call everybody to say there is something wrong. And we as people, we can change things. And we are able to do it. People around the world change a lot of things. And here in the United States, we could do that. We can close any prison if we choose to. Thank you. Thank you, Mubarak, and thank you for saying that anybody can speak out. And we are very honored that we have another person from the U.S. military here who is speaking out. And he is a U.S. Marine Corps major, but he's also a retired judge advocate general who defended one of Guantanamo's youngest detainees. So we are very happy that he's here with us to speak out against the prison in Guantanamo. Thank you so much, Major Eric Montalvo. Just so you understand where I'm coming from and my background. Uh, I was in the Marine Corps for 21 years, prior enlisted, worked my way up. I served in the Gulf War. I served in Iraq, Ramadi in 2005, and I've been over Afghanistan probably about 20 times. So uh, I was assigned to Guantanamo Bay uh, defense work, and uh, I'm speaking as, also as a New Yorker. My concern in this process and the existence of Guantanamo is, is fairly basic. Uh, we all grew up as a child uh, playing games, and nobody liked when somebody who was playing the game changed the rules in the middle of the game. We all know that. And no one likes it. And that's what's happening now. What are the rules of the game? There are O's that people took. Words mean something. Okay? Doctors took an oath. Lawyers took an oath. People made promises. We have spent blood and treasure. There are veterans out there that have died to defend our Constitution, the way of life here in the United States. So if we're willing to die, including myself, okay, for the Constitution of the United States, why is that? Because it's important. Because this country is about the rule of law. And when you look at the Constitution, if you have not, you need to. There are things in there that have been around since we started. It all starts with the people. There's supposed to be due process. There is no due process happening here. I'm a taxpayer. We're paying taxes for a facility that has no use. Why is that? Millions of dollars. We can stand here and have a debate over funding for this, for that. Where are we going to pay for this? There's people dying on the streets in this country alone, and we have poured millions upon millions of dollars into that facility. And where are we today? We have the 9-11 people that were associated with the bombing. There are 3,000 plus victims from that attack. Okay, and they do not have justice as I stand here today. Why? Why is that? So we all need to look as Americans and find where the fat is and cut it out. Guantanamo is not, does not serve a purpose. It is like a holding pen for animals. As a, the Colonel mentioned, standing in a place for 10 years when you have not been accused of a crime, okay, and you can't talk to a lawyer and you can't do anything else, does any one of you want to stand for that proposition? Because no. get, no, no, because that could all affect each and every one of us. We look what the government does, and that's why we started the country with separation of powers, right? That's why we elect people through the rule of law. That's why we adhere to the systems. That's why we have speed limits and, and anti-violence uh, regulations and all of that. We all know what's bad. Murder's bad. Beating up people is bad. Why are we allowing a process that is contrary to everything we believe in as Americans to continue to persist? And not only that, every one of you is writing a check each and every day to make sure it's happening. We are part of the problem. Yes. President Obama has not been held accountable. The politicians have not been held accountable. That's not right. This is America. I don't care what anybody else is doing anywhere else in the world. That's not my problem. 
I served my country. I went into battle. I put my life at risk. And I put my life at risk because somebody up top said, this is the way we're going to do business. Is this the way we're going to do business? Because I don't want to be a part of that. No. Okay. Next up, I am extremely honored uh, to present Mesfin, who is a survivor of torture from Ethiopia and part of the Torture Abolition and Survivor Support Coalition. It's extremely brave for you to be here today and to speak to us. So a warm welcome to Mesfin. Uh, thank you very much, uh, you all, and it's very honor to speak here. Like, uh, I might be dead like one day in the past 10 years, but I survived to make it here. Uh, one of my brother I uh, heard speaking like uh, there's darkness and suffering in these detention centers. And I don't think any one of you had experienced darkness. No one knows about darkness. No one here, I think, feels suffering, what real suffering is. And you are locked in these detention centers in this darkness only if because you speak of democracy. You speak of your freedom, or even try to speak of freedom. I remember about five or six years ago, President Obama was on his campaign of democracy, I mean, of, of his election campaign, speaking of Guantanamo, and promising that he's going to close it. Am I right? Yes. 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 Good. At that time, I had hoped that his hand might stretch to our country, where there are many detention centers who are, that are even secret to its own, so to our own people. But nowadays, from what I see, even if you people fight, he's not even sound to listen what we are saying. You don't know how much how heartbroken I am when I see you here, still fighting to close this Guantanamo Bay, or to make them, to have them close this Guantanamo Bay. Where is our hope of closing those detention centers where this dictator government do whatever they can, whatever they want? That's what we expected from America, to stretch out its hand to those people who are suffering even more. But now, they seem not to listen to what its own people are asking. How are, how are they going to push democracy for those countries? Why do they send us their aids? OK? So I'm, I'm really proud to speak here uh, on behalf of my country fellow men who are suffering a lot in these detention centers. And I want you all to know that I'm here to speak whatever you want me, or, or I don't know, if you like to know what I experienced or what people experience in my country. So I'm still urging President Obama, on behalf of you people, to close Guantanamo and then stretch out our, his hand to our country. Thank you very much. I'm Davidson from Veterans for Peace, who just came from the court. She's going to give us an update. Hi. I think probably a lot of you were here a little more than two months ago when Diane Wilson, uh, a co-founder of Code Pink, a veteran for peace, uh, was on her 57th day of a water-only fast, and she went over that fence in an orange jumpsuit that said, free the 86 and shut down Gitmo. She was charged with unlawful entry. And so the last two days, she's had a trial. She was, she's been doing her own defense. She's been doing a marvelous job as a pro se defendant. The government's case was actually very weak. They had no, uh, they had very little documentation. They didn't even know what was going on until after she was over the fence. The government's case is that she knowingly went over the fence. Um, her case is that she was propelled over the fence by the people who were helping her up to perch on it to draw attention to Guantanamo. Um, the plight of the prisoners in Guantanamo, we've, she has managed to get it brought in 
tangentially into the trial. Uh, she hasn't been allowed to make a full case about about why that, why she was there that day, but but the plight of the prisoners has is in the court record, and so the closing statements were made this morning, and the jury is deliberating right now. So if everybody could just send their not guilty thoughts in that direction as hard as you can. Let's hear it. Not guilty. Not guilty. Okay, maybe maybe they heard you, and maybe that was jury tampering, but. And that's and I'm glued to my phone, so if anything happens while well, we're here, I will let you know. Right. Solidarity uh, between these detention centers all over the world. Hi everyone. My name is Murphy Bay Jr. I have a three minute window. I just want to say this for the guys. Hello? Oh, louder. They want me to speak louder. I just want to say this about the guys that's over there in Godmonable Prison. It is most definitely a hellhole. There's nowhere where you want your family members or your loved ones, anyone that you care about. They're treating the guys over there very, very terrible. Not only there, but right here in the country, right here where we live at. Pelican Bay, Victorville, where I was at. You know, they're actually doing things that you might not believe. They have uh, these tools that they get from hospitals and they put a uh, substance in your nose, similar to the closest I can get to it is KY jelly. And they put this in your nose and they slide this tube up your nose, then down your throat. And this is how they're feeding the people because they're standing up for what they believe in and what's right, what they should be doing. You understand, far wise is the food, the medical, this health in general. They're not getting it, and this is why they're on the strike. The things that they should be getting, far, even down to a common aspirin, just an aspirin, a Tylenol, just someone to talk to, people that have uh, mental issues, they're not even get a chance to see anyone. So when the people with mental problems, then some people are uh, develop mental problems from the conditions they're in, and they don't have anyone to talk to neither and they then become real crazy in there. You understand? Because you have to understand, you're in like a uh, three and a half by maybe six and a half foot cell, okay? And there's like a window that you can look out of that's about maybe three by seven. Then they feed you your food in this tray, and the guy that's supposed to be looking out for you at your best interest, he's spitting in your food. Only because you're in compliance. So if you're in compliance, they say you are manipulating the system. But if you act up, then they really can punish you. So it's like a catch-22. You do what you're supposed to do, you get punished. Then when you break their laws and their rules and regulations, there's another punishment that they don't talk about on TV. This is when they come in there in the middle of the night and beat the crap out you, like a hundred on one, with shackles, handcuffs, and their waist. They have another thing. Well, you see what this lady has on right here. Now, just imagine if you if this woman had shackles right here, with a chain coming up here, and 20 guys come in your cell and beat you up. You don't have a fighting chance. This is what these guys are going through. That's why they're striking. I mean, not eating, you know? And they want to make them eat. But I'm here to support them guys because I don't want to go in there and support them, but I can support them out here. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? I can say something, you know? For, I can be their voice a little bit. You understand what I'm saying? And this is a worthless, a worth cause, you understand? This is worth the fight. This is worth the fight because if any of you all daughters, sons, grandfathers were there, you probably would feel a lot different. You understand? The people that's talking about do these to these people, do this to these people, do this to these people, do this, they come up with all type of cruel and unusual things, man, that you can't even imagine. You understand? I also want to give high honors to Miss Diane that's in trial today or waiting to get sentenced for jumping this fence right here. You understand? Because it took a lot of heart and it let you know that she's really serious about what she's doing. Because I don't have the heart to jump this fence right here.
You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you, and face the bullets and the dogs that she faced. So she's most definitely got a lot of heart than I do. And she's bigger than what she's looked. She's probably a giant, but she's about this big. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for this. Introduce our hunger striker here today, Andres Conteres. Juanita, big hand. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really an honor to be here. And um, I have to tell you that um, Andres Conteris holds a very special place in my heart. Um, he's my sweetheart. And um, we became sweethearts on June 3rd. And then a month later, five, a month and five days later, he, be he began his fast. So we've actually, he's been on a fast longer in our relationship than he's not been. <laughs> And I just want to tell you that this is an amazing man. I've never met anyone more disciplined, more committed, more true to his values, more caring, more generous. And um, every day is just a miracle. Every day watching him be so focused and so loving and so caring is just profound. And I wanna thank you. It means the world to me and to him that you're here to bear witness and make visible this hidden act of torture. And so, yes. And so during this feeding, during this demonstration, I really ask that you just send him all of your love, all of your protection, all of your caring, and, and send all of that to everyone who is suffering, everyone, that we may know love, greater love, that we may break our hearts open wide, even wider than we think we possibly could. Thank you. When we think of our own complicity and how this country is perpetrating torture, each one of us here is also a torturer in some way. We all pay taxes to this regime that is torturing on a daily basis in so many ways. And my brother here, who just spoke, this is Murphy Bay, and you've heard his words. We go way, way back. In fact, we met two days ago. <laughs> And Murphy, uh, Murphy is actually responsible for this haircut, so give him a hand, huh? I just happened to sit in the barber's chair and told him that I would be doing this today, and he said, I've been to Pelican Bay. I was, I was in the shoe of Pelican Bay. The shoe is the security housing unit, and there are over a thousand prisoners in the shoe of Pelican Bay. And our brother right here, Murphy Bay Jr. was there, and he was the only Washington, D.C. resident in the shoe of Pelican Bay during the years that he was there. And it was an absolute miracle that he and I crossed paths just two days ago. He spoke a couple nights ago, and he is here with us. And we are so grateful that you're here, bringing the spirit of all of the men who suffered torture in Pelican Bay and all the prisons in California that are under that regime that inflict torture on those prisoners. Please give him a hand. <laughs> Make love, not war, says Dixie. Not here, though, not here. <laughs> so the speakers were amazing today. Uh, I, I'm so honored and grateful that each one of you spoke and you carry the spirit of those who are victims of torture. You carry the spirit of the prisoners who we are here for today, the ones who are on these posters, the ones who are carried in the gurneys, the ones whose names are mostly nameless to us, but we know there are 164 of them. And just a couple weeks ago, there were 166, so we celebrate that two Algerians were released recently. But at the rate that they are released, it would take 40 years to release the rest of them. We cannot wait that long. And that's why we're here, and many of us are wearing orange ribbons. And we ask each one of you to wear an orange ribbon, if you would. 
and go to the website that's called orangeribbons.net. And there, if you want, we can send you ribbons in the mail and you can distribute them. Our goal is to distribute 2.7 million orange ribbons. And why that amount? 2.7 million dollars is what it costs for one prisoner for one year in Guantanamo. That means $7,400 a day for every single prisoner. During the time that we are here today, during this hour, thousands and thousands of dollars will be spent to sponsor torture of these prisoners in Guantanamo. And so we are here to say no. We are here to say basta. And I am here because my brothers in, in Pelican Bay, in Corcoran Bay, in other prisons in California started fasting on a hunger strike on July 8th of this year. They fasted 60 days and decided to end their fast yesterday on day 60. And they decided to end for many reasons, but not because their will to carry on for justice has been defeated. And so we honor all of the prisoners in California who have been suffering torture. And the torture is manifest through indefinite detention in the shoes where Bay suffered. Indefinite detention means when you go into prison, you know what your sentence is. But then they send you to the shoe. And that means solitary confinement. And that means you never know when you're getting out of there. That is indefinite detention. Every single prisoner in Guantanamo suffers the torture of indefinite detention every day. And every one of them has also suffered extensive, extended solitary confinement. And in the shoe of Pelican Bay,